Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, kind of in a sour mood right now because my TV just went out. So I'm a little frustrated right now because I have to buy a new TV tomorrow. But I'm not even going to put my best effort into this, unfortunately. Uh, we're jumping into August 1989. I'm going to try to give you my reviews quickly because I'm just not in the mood to really do this right now. But i got to get something out there, so... I only got two movies to look at today, so that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's get to the first movie, James Cameron's The Abyss. In 1984, director James Cameron thrilled audiences with his vision of the future, The Terminator. In 1986, he created the science fiction masterpiece, Aliens. This summer, he will take you into a world no man has ever seen before. Sadly, this was not one of James Cameron's biggest hits. he just come off of Aliens. He had already built his name with the Terminator five years prior to this. But uh, the movie just didn't do so well. Bombed at the box office. was seen as a major failure financially. But did well with critics. They really liked the visual effects with it. And I think it's a really good movie. I think it's one of James Cameron's most underrated movies, if not his most underrated movie. The visuals in this movie are very impressive. I like what they did with the water effects in this. The, thr the thrilling aspects are very well done. The characters are very interesting. Uh, the movie, I think, did a, uh, there's a better version of this with the special edition that came out a few years later. And that's just my thinking on it here. Like I said, I'm trying to rush this real quickly. But, yeah, this is an overall enjoyable movie. I really enjoyed it a lot. I'm glad to see that it has gotten the reputation that it's built up over the last couple of years. And people are discovering it. It's a movie that I think is very underrated. One of James Cameron's most underrated films. That's my thoughts on The Abyss. So let's go ahead and get to the last movie, and that is A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. His mother was a God-fearing woman. His birth was an unspeakable horror. Please don't let him do that! His life and death have been one incredible nightmare. But now all that is going to change. Because Freddy wants to become a daddy. One of his babies. What's wrong with me? You're just a little pregnant. Even if he has to adopt. No! Do unborn babies dream? When it comes to chills. It happened while I was awake. When it comes to screams. The part just start. When it comes to pure terror. Bold appetite. <laughs> Delivers like Freddy. Better buckle up. All right, Kruger. This time it's for Kate. A nightmare on Elm Street 5. The Dream Child. Uh, talking about the other Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh, the first movie's a classic, classic horror movie. Second one is classic in a campy kind of way. It's a very campy movie. A lot of gay overtones to it. Uh, part 3, I think, is the best of the series, honestly. The original series. And Part 4, I think, is good, but not great. But this movie, this one has the darker tone than most of the other films do. They use a blue filter lightning, lighting technique in most of the scenes to make it to amplify the effect. There's, very, there's a lot of very gothic imagery in this movie as well. This is a very, like I said, it's a very darker movie. And it was one of the few, last few slasher films released in the 80s, back when... Slasher films in the '80s were probably the biggest is the biggest thing out there. It's a movie that I think is very cl is very good. I don't think it's the best of the series. Like I still think Part Three is the best of the overall series, original series. But I like where they were going here. I like the ideas that they put around here. There are some generally scary moments in this movie. Like there are legitimately scary moments, but there are also those moments where you can tell they were start trying to go a little too over the top with some of the jokes, the, the puns, and all that. But that's what you get from Robert England. You get that kind of stuff, and you kind of just accept it at this point. 
So overall, yeah, this is a good this is a good movie. Very good is not as good as the other movies, but still very good indeed. I definitely check I definitely say check it out. Again, sorry for the sucky quality this time around. Uh, just lots of things are going on right now. This is something that I did not need to happen right now, but it is what it is. So I'll try to work my way around it. But thank you for watching this one. Uh, tomorrow we have the weekend of August eighteenth with some movies that. Are very good. Uncle Buck, Casualties of War, and then we also have Cheetah, Let It Ride, Root Awakening, Eddie and the Cruisers too. So we'll definitely look at those as well. We got a pack show tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be. Hopefully I'll be in a better mood tomorrow. But I just wanted to get this one out here real quickly, so at least I'm catching. I'm caught up here. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. And I, again, you will get a better episode next time around. I promise. But. In the meantime, if you do want to see more episodes like this, check out the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow for a better episode. Again, my apologies for rushing this one out here. It's not the best quality. I don't even have the right lighting on me, but it is what it is. I'm just not in the real good mood right now. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Good night.